So you've got your SCADA system doing alarming and monitoring on all of your different processes, devices, everything. And the question remains, who's doing the monitoring on your SCADA system itself? And well, in this video, we're going to show you how you can do that with VT SCADA, use an example of monitoring the available disk space on the drive where the historian is. So let's get going with an example. So I've got VT SCADA app running in front of me. I'm just going to open up the tag browser. Now I've already made a context tag where I'm going to put in my workstation driver here. So to do that, I'm just going to click new, go into the drivers, scroll down to the bottom and select the workstation driver. Now here, I'm just going to call this my uh, computer name. So that's going to be yes. And that's going to go to um, the workstation. And if I leave this unspecified, it will just always use the local computer. Um, but in this case, I want to make all these tags specific to my workstation. So I'm going to go RDS XPS and I'll apply that. And now if I clicked OK, the tag would be created. But there's one thing I want to show you first, and I'm going to hit F1. And in this case, we're going to bring up the help file about the workstation status tag. And one of the things in the related items here is the different IO addresses. So I'm going to go down. We can see that there's all kinds of different things that we can monitor from battery levels to disk space to IO to CPU usage. And in this case, we're going to look at this um, free disk space and we'll create a tag to show that. So I'm going to go back to my application here, click OK to this, create a new child tag. And in this case, we're going to just do an IO and calc tag. And so you can see I have it set up to the an analog data type, not a calculation. And I'm going to call this guy uh, free disk space. And we, you guys would put in a description and it would be great. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to. In the read address, I'm going to put in free disk space. And there's one thing that we need to do on the end of this one, and that's tell it which drive to use. So it's going to take a look at this and take out that drive that we want. So the other thing that we're going to do here is typically with free disk space, we don't need to look at this every second. It's moving hopefully pretty slowly. So we would put it to something like 60. But in this case, I'm just going to change it to like five just so that we get the data quickly because I don't want you guys to wait forever. So the next up is the scaling. So this is data is coming in in, in uh, bytes. And so we're going to change that to something more reasonable like gigabytes. So I'm going to say that every 1,000 megabytes, so that's going to be one with nine zeros, one zero 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 represents one gigabyte. And so we'll leave the expected range of that alone for now. In the quality tab here, we're just going to turn off that it isn't currently questionable data. Uh, we're going to enable the logging to the historian. And the dead band is actually going to be useful. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we don't need it here. So in the alarms, we're going to set a low alarm and we'll just set up a warning to say that if this gets below, say, 50 gigabytes, then give us an alarm. And then in the display here, I'm just going to set up the engineering units and say that we would maybe like to call this gigabytes. And I don't think we need any digits after it. Just a, a coarse number is probably fine. So I'm going to apply that and say, OK. And then you see our free disk space here. So we're just going to right click on that and say draw. And then we can put in something here, whatever we want. So we can just put in a numeric value here and put it in down below here and say, uh, close that and just change the text to white. If I just pull this down a little bit, then you can see it right in there. So 496 free gigs. If I were to um, get down below 50 gigs, then that alarm would go off and we'd see it in our alarm page here. So I hope you found that helpful and I really hope that you guys go in and add these things to your application so that you can really monitor it and make sure your application is running efficiently and also make sure that you never ever have that embarrassing situation where you just flat out run out of disk space. Anyway, have a great day. Hope this helps.